All righty. Welcome, everybody. Um, I've got an outline in front of me so that I don't forget any important points. So if it sounds like I'm just kind of reading through a list, I am. <laughs> so again, if you have a question, pop it in the chat. Um, Algetha will be helping me watch the chat. And if you know there's a, an important question that I don't seem to be hitting on, she'll stop me and we'll, we'll get it covered. Um, so the information that I'm going to cover today is things that have changed um, to the way you're used to doing things. So this is not training for new officers. This is a refresher for those of us who have been doing the job and need to know what the current guidelines say or what the changes are. Um, we will be teaching classes for new exchequers at Great Western War. Um, uh, Morgana has kindly offered to help me teach those classes at Great Western War. So we'll have, you know, some different tracks during the day. If you have people in your local group that you think might be interested in becoming an exchequer or just helping out with the exchequer's office, please tell them about the classes, send them by. We are desperate for volunteers. Um, I know that the exchequer's office can be scary. Um, having to, you know, balance a checkbook and put your name on the dotted line stating that this is correct and accurate can be a little intimidating, but um, I'm here to assure everyone that just about anybody can do this job. It's not as scary as it seems, and we really desperately need your help. So um, please send everybody my way or have them talk to local ex-checkers near you. Um, we, we really need their help. Um, everybody is in, welcome to attend the office uh, of these classes, even if they don't intend to become an officer or a deputy, if they just wanna come and see how the money is handled and, and uh, find out what's going on behind the scenes, everyone is welcome. We don't hide anything. If anyone ever wants to look at the books, we are an open book. They can ask, we will make arrangements so that they can take a look. Um, so what we're going to be covering today is the new kingdom financial policy that was just signed by Alexander and Tahira. It became a uh, policy at the latest board of directors meeting. There were many, many kingdoms that had new policies approved due to changes required at the society level. So ours was one of them and our subsequent policies will be following close on the, those heels. So Great Western War, our SCARS and PayPal uh, policies, and um, all of those things are coming soon. So keep your eyes open. There'll be a lot of changes, uh, more changes. Um, there are changes to the current financial report form that we use um, and I don't want anybody to, to jump into anything new quite yet. I'll get into that in more deeply in a few minutes, um, but just know that this is gonna affect every officer who must submit a financial report. So it's important, that's why these, this class is mandatory and that's why we're gonna hit it um, early in the day, but not first thing. Um, I'm gonna review event budgets, um, why they're, useful, why they're necessary, why they're required, um, and how to put together a budget. Uh, I want to remind people that budgets are not meant to tie your hands so that you can't function. They're meant to be a guideline. Um, they're meant to help everyone think of all of the expenses and all of the income that might be um, involved in an event and in the running of a branch. Um, we do not expect you to hit your budget square on. That just can't happen. This is finances. So things change and we know that. We just want people thinking about how to budget. Uh, next, we're gonna talk about changes at gate. Uh, changes at gate due to the COVID situation 
and other issues. So um, we're going to touch on the kingdom guidelines and a few other changes that have uh, been requested by society and how we can sort of bring our gate policies into the 21st century. Mm. So um, there's no reason that we all have to beat ourselves to death at gate. We should be able to make it a little easier and go and enjoy the event as everyone else can. Uh, next will be how to complete the financial report form. I know it's been a long time since anyone has reviewed the re report form. Um, it can be very intimidating. There is a lot that your local X checkers can do to make my job easier. I have to compile all the information that all of y'all put together and send it to the SCA, you know, to the treasurers. And instead of having to go back and forth and correct reports five or six times, if we can get it right the first time, it's a big help to everyone. So um, it's like I say, it's been a long time since some of us have reviewed that report form. There are changes. There are new things. So we're going to review that. And then we're going to talk about the new SCA registration system. Uh, that's SCARS. Um, we have a lot to share there. It is really a fantastic system, even though it isn't perfect. It is a very good system. So we're going to review that. We're going to get a look at how someone attending an event will log on and register for an event. And then a quick look at what information you will get back from the SCAR system to run your gate successfully and to do your reports. Uh, and then lastly, we're going to talk about PayPal. Um, it is my hope that PayPal will become a big part of how we do business in the future. Um, I am constantly asked, why can't we use credit cards? I am constantly asked why we can't um, have an easier way to to make payments. So uh, we do have a very good system. We just need to become comfortable using it. The rest of the SCA across the world uses PayPal and um, to a great extent, we are way behind the curve. We just don't. And it's partially due to our lack of internet access or cellular access, but there are a lot of times that we could be using the system and we just choose not to. So um, I think it's a matter of becoming more comfortable with the system and learning more about it. And we can make this more common in Kaid. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be covering today. Um, so I'm gonna move right into um, Cara, I just want to interrupt really quickly and let sure. you know that I did make you co-host, so you are capable of sharing anything that you need to on the screen. Okay, thank you. Sounds good. It looks like I forgot to print one of my notes, so I'm going to skip over here real quick and do that. So we're gonna start out talking about um, the new financial policy. Um, so it's important that we talk about this because most of our branches and groups do not have their own financial policy, which means they're expected to follow kingdom financial policy. And um, I like to encourage each branch to have their own financial policy, but I understand that sometimes that's just more than what's necessary. But when you don't have your own, you must enforce kingdom policy. Um, so the changes that have happened, um, we now have a, a layout and a table of contents. The society treasurer was, or the society uh, exchequer was quite insistent that all new financial policies follow a template. And um, that helps them 
now they don't have to leaf through pages and pages to find the phrase they're, they're looking for. They can go to a section and find what they're looking for. I understand their, their uh, requirement or their request, but it is now a requirement. So any new branch that wants to create a financial policy must use the template. Um, and it's just to help with layout and, and locating information. Um, so if you need a copy of the template, it is in Teams, or you can contact me. I can send it to you. Um, it's simply a guideline. It says, you know, section one must include this, section two must include that, so that they don't have to go looking. Uh, and it helps you think of all the things that need to be included in a financial policy. One of the new things that they're talking about um, and has become an issue now during the COVID shutdowns is how financial committee uh, votes must be handled within your branch. Um, we cannot, we can meet virtually, but we may not vote via social media. So you can discuss issues, but you cannot have an official vote via social media. So that means that everyone has to send in an email or you have to have a live virtual meeting like this one via Zoom and you can do you know, a vote this way. But uh, everyone posting a note on Facebook will not cut it. Um, branch officers should know that the votes must be recorded. So they have to have a tally of those votes somewhere. I recommend that they use the free form tab on the financial report or the comments tab on the financial report. It's an easy place to log your financial committee votes, but it must be somewhere that you can retrieve in case of an audit and show that your whole financial committee has approved this change or this expense or whatever you're voting on. Um, so no votes via social media. Um, emergency expenses. Each group should have a financial policy. If you do not, you follow kingdom financial policy. If you have a budget, you must stick to your budget. So if you have budgeted that your group can spend $50 on site tokens, then you do not need financial committee approval to spend the $50. If it is not mentioned in a budget, if it's not mentioned in your financial policy, then it's an emergency expense. And an emergency expense, uh, so now less than $200 can be approved by the exchequer and the seneschal. So if the two of you agree, it is a valid expense, you can write the check. Over $200 must be approved by a unanimous vote of the financial committee. That's new, unanimous. Usually it's been two thirds or a majority. Now it is unanimous. So how do you determine if it's an emergency? Use common sense. When a normal meeting of the financial committee isn't possible, um, when there's not enough time to reach everyone to get a response, use your common sense, do the best you can, contact me, I can issue a variance if, if it's an emergency, we'll get your bill paid, but keep in mind that unanimous votes are now required if you don't have a variance. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Uh, there's a whole section now on methods for controlling cash receipts. Um, so please, the financial policy is available on the Kingdom website. It's on Teams. Take a look, uh, review it carefully. As I mentioned, several things have changed. The meat of the policy has not changed. Some of the unique things about Kaid have not changed, but a few of this finer details like I'm mentioning 
have changed. Um, so for controlling cash receipts, funds must be deposited in a timely manner. That's always been our, our policy. Cash may not sit in a cash box. A um, couple of groups have recently divulged that they have a couple hundred dollars sitting in the cash box and they just keep it there so they don't have to run to the bank before an event. This is a no-no. We may not do that. All cash must be in the bank. So no cash boxes sitting anywhere. Cash box seed money is not event profit. So if you have withdrawn $300 to seed your cash box in the morning, at the end of the day, the $300 is redeposited separate from all of the rest of the income from the event. So all of the rest of the income from the event is event income. Cash used to seed the cash box is simply a deposit. It's always been our money. We just moved it. Comes out of the bank and it goes right back in. It's not an expense. It's not event income. Uh, it is recommended that your branch use a stamp to endorse checks. Um, I know that several groups are just signing the back and that's, that's okay, but it is really more secure to use a stamp. The bank will charge you a couple of dollars, usually 25 maybe dollars for a, an endorsement stamp. That is a, an approved expense. I mean, it's, it's a safety issue. So it is something that your branch should be using is an endorsement stamp. Um, it is not a requirement. It is just a recommendation that you use a stamp. Uh, advent admission charges. Um, we ran an experiment in the last kingdom financial policy that said uh, all kingdom events will be financially supported by the kingdom with the hosting group keeping all profits. That has been removed. Um, and the reason that was removed is due to the financial situation of the kingdom over the last 15 months. Um, it may be put back into kingdom pol uh, financial policy. Remember the financial policy has to be renewed every two years. So they're kind of aimed at the current situation that's happening in the kingdom. So once it's in policy, doesn't mean it's meant to be there forever. It's meant to be there until we get sorted out. So um, right now, groups may request a variance from the traditional split, the 60-40 split. Um, in the future, the kingdom may waive the split. Um, it, that's all up to conversation about where we are financially. If your group is in a financial bind, they just need to talk to the kingdom exchequer. Variances are available. If you're doing well, then the kingdom may request their split because we're struggling a little. Uh, clarification regarding comps. So if you're hosting an event, um, it has been common practice to comp certain people. Um, we're going to have to tighten down on the, that a bit. Uh, this was brought to our attention by the society. Comps may only be offered to people who are paid members of the SCA. So we can't offer free event admission to the winner of a contest because we can't guarantee that that winner is a member. And we may only offer complimentary passes to members. So I need to encourage everyone to buckle down a little bit on comps and make sure that you're following the kingdom financial policy. Uh, the crown may be comped. Uh, you can't force it on them. If they choose to pay a gate fee, they can pay a gate fee. So, um, but we can't just give away complimentary passes. Um, and again, this comes down from society. So please do your bit to help out by uh, 
following the rules. Another new bit to finance, Kingdom Financial Policy is the asset management and control of inventory. This is another thing that has come up from the society level. Um, group exchequers have always been responsible for tracking branch or group property. Uh, it is our job to know where our group's property is and that it is well maintained and it is depreciated and taken care of. And uh, this will become very important in the coming months um, when I get into talking about the financial report form. I'll dive into this a little more deeply, but uh, there are going to be some big changes to how um, uh, inventory and material equipment property is handled. So I need every group to really give some thought to where did the thrones come from? Who made them? When did those crowns enter our regalia? Who made them? What year? What do we think they might be worth? Um, you can't change anything that's already on your financial report except the date you received it. I need that in updated. The value can't change, but um, who made it, when it entered your property, those things are important. There's a lot of that information missing and it's vital um, here in the next couple of months. So please work on that. Another big change is trailers. Uh, any group that owns a trailer. Um, if you remember several months ago, I sent out a request to every group to give me all kinds of information on your trailers if you own them. Um, and storage units, um, you know, storage containers, all of that stuff. Uh, big changes are still in the works for that. Insurance has become a big topic with the SCA um, and liability in regards to how trailers are stored and towed. So we now have a form that we must have signed by the person storing the trailer and another form signed by the person towing the trailer. Um, there's a lot of information attached to the form signed by the person towing the trailer. They really need to check all the boxes and, um, you know, be very thoughtful about the vehicle they use to tow the trailer. Liability is a huge issue. Um, some of our trailers far exceed the weight limits for vehicles on the road or weight limits for the towing vehicle. And this becomes a huge liability issue. So they will need to read the requirements. Is my vehicle capable of pulling a trailer at this weight? What is the weight of the trailer? How do I find out? Um, and then sign the form. They're signing on the dotted line. So, um, and this is separate from the insurance issues about where the trailer is stored. So we are supposed to carry insurance on our trailers. Um, this does not cover them while they're on the road. This covers them in storage. Um, and that's something that's gonna be required going forward that all groups have their trailer ins insured um, and the person towing them must have their own insurance which will then cover the trailer while it's in motion um, so lots of trailering issues the forms are available in teams um, i will happily send them to anybody who needs copies but uh, please do give some thought to the the trailer issue and and how they're stored and towed. Uh, and real quick, when you're entering um, licensing fees for trailers on the report form, that should be listed under fees and honoria. So it is not an expense. DM fee, DMV fees are fees. So they go fees and honoria. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Okay, the difference, real quick, the difference between inventory and property. Inventory is something that you plan to resell. 
So if your branch has purchased a quantity of the known world handbook, you know, that's made, uh, sold by the society, and you want to resell that to newcomers or give it away to newcomers, that is inventory. If you have um, uh, make up little embroidery kits to make favors for your barony and, and you sell those little kits, that's inventory. So anything that you're reselling is inventory. So all of the bits and pieces that you buy, if you wanna do a baronial fighting unit wants to put together shields and um, the barony buys the shields as a lot and then sells them to each member of the barony who would like to paint a shield with the baronial arms so they all match, that's inventory. Um, so you'll have an expense when you buy the materials and it will go on its own tab, which is the inventory tab on the report form. So it is not a general supply and you track inventory separately from property that you own. So all of the dishes that you use when you're cooking a feast, that's property. You do not intend to resell that, that's property. Um, so your, your trailers, your coronets, your thrones, your cooking utensils, pavilions, computers, printers, any of that stuff that the branch owns is all property that should be on a list and the exchequer should be tracking all of those items. Uh, changes to special and dedicated funds. Um, most groups don't have dedicated funds, but a few do. If the branch is saving up money to do a special project, it can become a dedicated fund. But the dedicated fund must have guidelines. So you need to write up guidelines for each dedicated fund. So each fund will have um, a goal. We want to buy a new pavilion. That's your goal. If for some reason, while you're saving up money, someone donates a pavilion. So now you don't need the money you've been saving up. It can be diverted. So now you have a secondary goal. If we don't spend it on a pavilion, we'll spend it on refurbishing the trailer. So that's your secondary goal. You must have a primary and a secondary. You must have a deadline. It can be five years, it can be six months, it, whatever you think is reasonable. And you can always revise your plan but it can't be endless. And then it must have an ultimate disposal point. In other words, if you don't buy a pavilion and you don't refurbish the trailer, what happens to the money? The money must be diverted back into your general fund. And that has to be a part of your dedicated fund policy. So all funds must be diverted back to the general fund eventually if they aren't spent on your special project. Um, we had a lot of groups that were asking us to set aside money for them and then they would disappear and years would go by and our hands were tied. We needed that money, but we couldn't spend it because it was dedicated to the Middle Eastern Guild who hasn't done anything in 15 years. So um, we needed to free up that money it became apparent we had far too many dedicated funds. So this became an issue. We now must have policies for each dedicated fund. All right. Um, in the previous uh, financial policy, there was a statement that said non-camping events will have complimentary admission for minors. That has been removed. So now all branches choose their own fee structure. We're not telling you how to structure your fees for your events, you decide. If you think you need to charge a fee for minors, you're free to charge a fee for minors. Um, but please note that the society has confirmed that they have seen an uptick in attendance 
at events when minors are free. <laughs> so that was the impetus behind making the change originally and making minors free. But there are those times when we need to change the rules and we need the flexibility. So that has been removed. Again, this isn't set in stone. It could come back later. Um, and just keep in mind that giving families a break does increase your attendance at events, but we're not mandating it. So, uh, And a quick reminder that all financial data must be backed up. The copies of the files on the Exchequer's laptop hard drive doesn't cut it. That's, that's a great backup, but it's not the only backup you should be backing up in several different ways. Um, I'm a big fan of offsite backup. Um, I have a background in the banking industry. Um, no bank keeps all of their files in one location. Um, and no bank keeps all of their information in the hands of one person. So uh, please do keep in mind that our books are open, that backups are required. We have several avenues for backup of information that are quite easy. Um, a hard drive, portable hard drive or a thumb drive swapped out with your branch of Seneschal every other month or every couple of weeks is a great plan. Backing up to um, the Kingdom web page, uh, report submittal, event report submittal portal is a good method, but that's a drop in the bucket to all of the information that should be backed up. Um, and then we have now Teams which is Microsoft Teams um, location. Every branch has their own folder. It's a place for you to back up all of your information. Um, it's free. There is no login fees. Um, and it, there's really no good reason that you, your branch X checkers don't get in there and just dump all their information in there. Hard files and digital files um, are required. We're required to keep those for seven years. Remember, we're subject to the IRS rules. Um, financial documents must be kept on file for seven years. At the end of seven years, everything should be shredded or burned, um, especially personal identifying information. If you've got um, warrants or um, I don't know, copies of people's ID and membership, all of that after seven years needs to go away and it doesn't go just in a dumpster. Yeah, signature um, card data. Signature card data, yeah. So yeah, all your banking information, that is sensitive information. So make sure that is properly handled. Um, and if, you, if your group doesn't own a portable hard drive, they're not that expensive. It's, I, I highly recommend that your branch have something um, owned by the branch that's passed on from exchequer to exchequer. And uh, it's a reasonable expense. And as a quick reminder, um, one thing I have instituted as Kingdom Exchequer is no transfers of any kind after December 10th of each year. So you, you may not be aware that I have to compile all the data, all the financial data from the kingdom into a year end report. And the biggest nightmare of that report is late transfers. It's money that your branch decides, let's get this off our books at the last minute, right at the end of the year. And now our books are nice and clean. Yeah, but it dumps it all that work on me. So please do me a favor. Save me literally two weeks of work when we were active, tracking down all of the last minute transfers throughout the kingdom. Um, 
If you receive a transfer from another group after December 10th, tear it up and contact the branch that sent it to you and tell them, we'll do this after the first of the year. You'll, you can give me a new check after the first of the year. Please do not write checks as transfers after December 10th. This, I, I, I please, <laughs> I beg you. Um, Okay, moving on. Our next section will be on the new version six financial report forms. Um, in the past, society has made available several versions of the financial report forms that every branch must submit at the quarterly. They must submit it quarterly. And then a final version of it at the end of the year. And they made several versions of this report form available on the society website. That has been removed now. We have one version. It's the newest version six. Um, please do not go and get the version six report form at this time. Continue doing what you're doing. And here is the reason. The IRS has ruled that our regalia is no longer, it, uh, in the past it fell under the category of artwork. And it no longer, they feel it no longer fits in that category, which moves, removes the whole regalia tab off of our report. It will not disappear. It will stay there until we're all used to not using it because if someone accidentally puts something on there we know what to do with it so that you'll see the tab, but we will not be using it in the future. And there's big red text all across it. Nothing should appear here. But that means everything that was regalia will now be depreciated. So that all of that has to be moved within the, the financial records. Now this is all going to happen with the auditors at the society level. They're going to do all of this for us. They are going to move all of our property around and put it in the right places. They're going to depreciate what needs to be depreciated. And they will tell us, here's what comes off of your depreciation list and moves on to your property list. Here's what was in regalia and now moves to depreciation. And that's going to start with 2019. So that's going to change a lot of our old records. They are going to do all of these updates for us and move our numbers around. They will give us new starting numbers, excuse me, new ending numbers for 2020, which we will then use for 2021. So this is why I don't want anybody to do anything. Don't make any changes. It's going to be done for us. All we have to do is take the numbers that they gave us for 2020 and start over 2021 on the new version six report form with all new numbers. I know this is wacky, but this is out of my hands. This is what we're directed to do. Um, it will make sense when you see it. Um, and I want everyone to know that changes to our ending numbers are no reflection on your bookkeeping or your accounting. This happens from the IRS down. So we are following the guidelines and it will all work out in the end. So just keep doing what you're doing. Each of you, I will contact you in turn and say, here's what we're doing. We're gonna walk through the whole process for your group and we'll get you back on track. Um, we must have all groups changed over to the new version six report form by the end of 2021. So we have lots of time. Uh, again, most of the hard work is being done for us. We will plug in and keep going. 
So, um, and going forward, if you're purchasing new regalia this year, and the purchase price of each item, so if you buy a set of coronets, the value of one of the coronets is less than $2,000, they will be expensed. Okay. Um, if the items are valued over $2,000, then it gets listed on the seven year depreciation section with the value of over $2,000 each, each, not a set, no more sets, each item. So the $2,000 is still a, a marker. It went up from 500 to 2000, that's still a marker. But where it goes, we have no more regalia. So now it is on a seven year depreciation. Okay, so I think that's everything about the new financial report form. Um, moving uh, on. There is one question in the chat um, wondering if Seneschals can have access to, to Teams. Uh, sure, I don't see why not. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, contact me and I will send you a, um, a an invitation. And, and I, am I am compiling a list of people who need to be invited Perfect. from the chat. So you can private message me or post in the chat what email address you actually private message me since you're posting an email um, that you'd want used. And I'll make sure that that can get taken care of after the meeting. Doing it right now. Okay. <laughs> yes, Kimia, they fixed the report. They've actually already found uh, bugs in the new report that they're fixing. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. It's Excel and it's financial. There are always going to be bugs. They expect each branch to be off by a few cents because several of the formulas in the report form are rounding formulas. When you round big numbers, you never get even sums, even totals. So we're always gonna be off by a penny or two. This is expected, don't panic. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, there's always bugs. We, we do the best we can and they get it. They're understanding. All right, do we wanna take a quick bio break or do we wanna plow on? Quick bio break. Okay, let's come back in, let's say five minutes, um, grab a drink, take a break. Okay. Any other questions real quick while we're waiting? No. Comment? I'm a little bit familiar with teams. Uh, my Yay. Boss. My boss price makes us uh, do everything in Teams, although it's not practical, but it's <laughs> but some stuff Teams is definitely useful for. So, mm -hmm. um, I manage Teams for the company I work at. We have a Teams account. And that's I manage it. Uh, the reason we chose to use it for the Kingdom is it's very secure. Um, I mean, it's as secure as the weakest Understand. link. Yeah, I'm a. I'm an SA and uh, and yeah, it's, it's nothing's perfectly secure unless you're an isolated network, which actually that's what we are. You know, mm -hmm. we are there. Uh, we have to consciously, physically hook up to the outside, and actually, we've never done. We never had a reason to do that, so. Yeah, and I, I want to con, you know, caution everyone when you're posting your banking information. There can be personal identifying information there that we do not want public. So um, make sure to to look over your documents. Most banks require social security numbers for sig signatories, right. and um, 
So be careful what you're uploading there. Keep that in your hard files. You know, don't post that on Teams, but um, it is as secure as our weakest link. And know that you'll be able to see the tabs for every other branch. So, um, you know, it is what it is. You're oh, okay. So we have access to each other's essentially. Yeah, basically. Let me show share my screen real quick and I'll give a shot of what Teams looks like. If I can find my correct screen here. You need to make sure that you already have what you plan to share open. Yeah. And then yeah. it'll come up as an option. I and I do, so. Okay. Sorry, I'm used to explaining to students how to share a screen when they have presentations. Okay, here we go. All right, mine's going to look a little different because I'm an admin for the kingdom, but um, can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, so this is the team's that you will see when you log in to upload your documents. You'll see the X checkers team. And if you go to the general channel, there is a files folder in general. And underneath the files, you see there's a file for each group in the kingdom. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to pick on Guildenholt because that's home for me. And here's a place for your quarterly reports and doomsday reports yearly. So, so far we have 19, 20, and 21. Uh, some groups go all the way back to 2017. I'm working on uploading further back. Um, here are bank statements. Um, some groups will have checking bank statements and savings bank statements. Guildenholt only has checking. Yeah, um, say again? Oh, ours is the same. Sorry, I mumbled that. That's OK. Uh, the trailer ID that I asked for earlier this year is there. Um, event reports. Uh, this is virtually empty due to COVID shutdown, of course. Agreement to serve and proof of membership can be stored in there. Um, a branch financial policy, committee meeting minutes can be stored in there. Miscellaneous documents. Um, I encourage that you put your banking, not sensitive banking information in here. So, you know, who's your contact at your bank kind of oh, stuff. No. No signature cards, obviously, in there. Obviously, yes. Don't put your signature cards. If if you have a, a, a sample that doesn't include personal identifying information, if it's just a name, that's great. Okay. But I really don't want to see anything that has social security numbers or anything uh, else identifying. There's, oh. a, there's two questions in the chat um, that I don't actually know what our current answer is to. Okay. And that's whether they still need to go through the Kingdom website to upload reports or if they can upload them directly in Teams, as well as if bank statements can be uploaded there as well. Absolutely, you can go direct to Teams. Um, putting your information in here for me saves me the step of having to go to the Kingdom website database and pull it over into Teams. I'm keeping everything in Teams. This is what gets sent to society. Um, so if we go into 2020, you'll see uh, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and submitted. Submitted is what went to society. So there's your fourth quarter report as it was submitted to the society. Please don't change any existing information that is here. I may have to start locking these down. Do not make any changes to the information that is already uploaded. If you have to revise a report, resend it to me and label it revised or upload it here, but clearly mark it 
as revised. So I would not assume this is a revised report. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. okay. Now I have a question on using something like a thumb drive. Can I uh, put, I guess it wouldn't be an idea, good idea, even signature card or something like something sensitive on the thumb drive itself. Um, yeah, uh, you know, anytime you move information, you risk, you yeah. risk it. Uh, if the thumb drive is encrypted or, or has a locking device, you're probably okay. If it's just being handled by you and your branch seneschal, it's probably okay, but. If just, it gets lost in transit or, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Just be very careful with people's personal identification. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. all we really need is a name. We don't, oh. we don't need to know their personal information. And now I got to make a, a trip to the bank. Uh, <laughs> well, I wasn't keeping hundreds, but we, from the, from the beginning, we always had like 25 bucks just sitting there in the cash. And I always had the philosophy of it. If something happened to it, I can, you know, I can replace the 25 bucks, you know. But it was just so we had something just in case I couldn't get to the bank because of my work schedule. I understand. Um, as I mentioned, I come from a banking background. And when, when you're working in a bank, the biggest taboo is to take money out of your own pocket and put it into the cash drawer. And right. the reason is because we need a paper trail for every penny. And if the money was stolen, we need to know that. If it okay. was lost, we need to know that. And so, I would definitely report it, but I would, like I said, I would replace it myself. Because well, and, and thank you for the donation. That's very, very kind of you. But do report it as stolen or lost um, so that we have a proper paper trail. And there's okay. reasons for all of those paper trails. So something that small is okay for the cash box or no? No, no, no. amount is okay in the cash box. Okay, so I will get that in the bank. Uh, I may wait till after our event coming up and then adopt it, be, stay me a trip. It's just uh, because I work at Vandenberg I get some weird schedules where uh, I just can't get to the bank or something, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. But going forward, please do make sure that okay. every and dime what, is in the bank. Yeah. I just, I want to admit, let you know, that way you understand there was nothing, you know, sinister. We weren't trying, it was just a convenient thing and such a small amount, you know, to me, it was small amount that I could replace it if something happens. Yeah, yeah. I know, okay. But I, I, I hope, but I, I just wanna be honest, that's, you know, and it's something that was adopted way back. So we've always kind of, even before I was exchequer, you know, so. Yeah. I know. There's we, a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that we've done for a long time that basically we just, some of these rules have actually been in place during the entire duration. We just need to actually update what is actually being followed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So don't worry about it. Every group has had that. We're just going to fix things moving forward. Okay. Yep. That's, I, okay. Yep. Okay. So don't feel guilty. Just fix it. Okay. <laughs> That's like I said, I will take perfect care philosophy. Of, you will take care after our June 9th event because it just, it'll go in with everything else. And then I have a clean cash box. For your, for your second quarter report, we can move that amount into the bank. <laughs> yes, yes. Great, thank you. Okay. Alrighty, I think we've covered the uh, version six financial report form. Everyone's gonna wait until they hear from me. In the meantime, they're gonna keep doing what they've been doing just as they've been doing it, correct? Yep. Okay. All right, moving on to presentation number three. Event 
budgets. Cool. Um, the reason that this is now becoming kind of a big issue is the kingdom has found itself in some unprecedented situations. Um, in 2018, we had an abdication and we had our first ever regent. And that was a difficult time for the kingdom. And what happened is a lot of kingdom level events were canceled. So we didn't have a queen's champion and we didn't have uh, a large coronation. And um, it really put a damper on things and our income suffered because of that. Um, so, you know, you go into those situations thinking, well, we'll recover next year. You know, next year we'll be back to normal and we'll get, get our feet back under us. Well, then in 2019, we had some pretty severe weather. We had heavy rains and wildfires and uh, some very cold weather. Um, and it had a huge financial impact on the kingdom. Uh, when I looked at the numbers from 2019, I was quite shocked um, how many events had to be canceled or were very under attended and ended up losing income. And when that happens, of course, the kingdom steps in and helps financially. Um, so we didn't have the recovery from, from 2018 that we were hoping for. So then we moved into 2020 and we got hit by the plague. <laughs> COVID shut us all down in March. So we had one or two kingdom level events and, uh, and then we shut down. So, you know, here we are with another year of no income under funded um, and our base bills continue. So, the kingdom doesn't have the same kind of obligations and expenses that a branch does, uh, but we do still have some large expenses. So uh, without no income and outgoing expenses, it became a concern. So his majesty Alexander very kindly stood up and said, you know, Anything anyone can do would be appreciated and everyone came through tremendously. It was a huge success, that fundraiser. Um, but that sort of left all of the branches in a bit of a lurch. Now you've all donated to Kingdom and now your coffers are running a bit tight. So here we go into 2021. We are continuing with the plague. We're halfway through the year with no income. So this has been unprecedented and it has been painful and uh, the kingdom can't continue to function this way. So we are very concerned about finances going forward. Ross and I have had several late night conversations about finances and uh, what that means. Um, we are very optimistic that we can recover from um, these three years of hardship if we're careful and if we're mindful. And one thing that's going to help us do that is careful budgeting. So um, the kingdom has a very strict budget, very pared back to the basics. Um, there were some unexpected expenses. We didn't realize how helpful Zoom was going to be. And then we didn't expect the increase in Zoom subscription fees that hit us pretty hard. Um, but we persevere and we're doing okay. But we need to really think about DMV fees and where can we save on insurance and what can we do to tighten the belt. So um, this is another reason that the kingdom split was removed from financial policy. Um, we do have to 
think about where we can, can recoup some funds. And unfortunately that comes from kingdom level events uh, largely um, and fundraisers, which we're not very good at doing, frankly. At the kingdom level, we're not very good at fundraisers, frankly. Um, so there are some very good forms in the Teams folder in regards to how to build a budget, uh, what kinds of things you need to keep in mind when you're planning a budget, um, things that you know might blindside you if you haven't autocratted an event before. So it, it's a good reminder tool. Budgets are not set in stone. We know that. We, you know, they're a guideline. Uh, we do our best to keep to our budgets, but life happens prices change, events get canceled. We all know this. Um, so budgets are guidelines only, but they are very helpful tools. Um, I'd like to remind everybody that the kingdom does survive largely on donations from each branch. It was tradition for years in Kaid that coronations, uh, the new crown would receive uh, donations from each branch. And that sort of fell away for a while. And um, we need to get back. Um, Aronrick was very good about reminding folks that the kingdom survives on donations and um, branches really stepped forward and started helping us out. And it made a big difference. It helped a great deal. Um, so that's just a quick reminder that we do rely on your help completely. Completely.